Hello everyone, this is Alex Ipatov and this is video number 10 of the series on Rook Endgames. In this video I'm going to talk about the Chiron position number 1. It's on your screens right now. The Chiron position is when the white spawn still hasn't reached the 5th rank. So in this position it's still on the 1st rank on c4. And when the black's rook attacks it frontally, so from c8. So the black rook should be placed in front of the passed pawn in order to further advance. It's a typical draw, and there are a few things to remember about this important position. First of all, as I already said, the black's rook should stay in front of the pawn, so on c8, as far away as possible from the white king. The second important point, the black king should stay on squares e6 and e5. Now let's see why it's that much important. For example, if white plays rook d4 with the idea king b4 and then c5, black should play king e5 and now white does not have move king b4 because then black wins the rook. And after rook d5 check, black comes back to e6 and c5 is still not possible because the rook is hanging. So what else can white do in this position? We have already seen that after rook d4 black has king e5 and white cannot make any progress there. Let's see what happens if white plays king b4. Now white threatens to play c5. If white manages to play c5 then the position is won for white. So black should prevent this. And black prevent this by starting to make checks to, to white's king. And that is why it is important to keep the rook as far away as possible from the white king. So on c8, on the back rank. So rook b8 check, king a5. And now we go back to c8 and we attack the pawn. If white plays rook d4, then we play king e5. Once again, we can see why it's very important to keep the king on squares e6 and e5 in order to be able to harass the white rook from d4. So, and also it's important to note that black can't play rook a8 check here because of king b6. Then rook c8 does not work because white manages to push the pawn forward and it's winning. And in case of one more check, then white has king c7 and there is no more check, the rook is attacked and c5 is unavoidable. So, if white plays king b4, black should make check. And after king e5, to come back to c8. Using the fact that white does not have rook d4, protecting the pawn due to king e5 attacking that rook. If white plays rook c1, then the king can come closer and this is an easily drawn position and so on. Then the white king will be cut off on b file and the black king would come closer to c6 or c5. It's a draw. So after rook c8, let's see what happens after king b5. Move king b5 renews the threat c5, so black does not have time to wait. We have to make one more check. And after king a6, once again we go back to c8. We cannot check from a8 because white would play king b7, attacking the rook and threatening c5. And after rook a5, white would have had king b6 and c5. So, after king a6, black plays rook c8, attacking the pawn. And once again, if white plays rook d4, we play king a5. And let me remind again, that's why it's important to keep the king on squares e5 and e6. And if rook h4, then simply king d6 and the king is too close and it's a draw. So what have we learned from this example? We have learned that if the black's king is cut off only on one file, it's usually a draw if the defending side meets two requirements. The first requirement is to keep the rook as far away as possible from the white king. So on the back rank, in order to have a frontal attack on the pawn. And the second requirement is to keep the king on e5, e6 squares. And whenever the white king comes out of c3, to check and go back to c8. And whenever the white rook protects the pawn from d4 to play king e5. Now let's take a look at a practical example. This game was played in 1978 between two grandmasters and Vasily Smyslov played with black, the seventh world champion with black pieces here. This is a theoretical drawish position we have examined just a few seconds ago. The only difference now is that we have flipped the board. Now it's black who has an extra pawn and now it's white who tries to make a draw. So this position is drawish because white does meet two requirements. 
first the white rook attacks the pawn from the back rank, so it's positioned as far away as possible from the black pawn and from the black king. So it's a frontal attack. And the second requirement is that the white king is located on e3, e4 squares. So it's a draw. The draw could have been achieved by playing king e4, one of those important squares. And if black played king b5 with the threat c4, then white would start to check and throw the black king away. So if this, if king a4, then simply rook c1. Not rook e1 check, because then black would win by playing king b3, threatening c4, and if rook b1 check, then king c2 and c4 is uninvitable. So the easiest way for draw would be to play king e4, and if king b5, then check, king a4 and rook c1 going back. If king b4, then one more check. If king a3, we would go back to c1, attacking the pawn. And black would not have anything better than going back and then one more check and so on. Another possible draw would have been to play rook h1. If black would play king b5, then simply rook b1 check and transposing to one of the lines that we had already examined in this and previous example. For example, king a4, rook c1, king b4, check, king a3, rook c1, rook d5, king e4. Harassing the black rook, and whenever it leaves the d file, we would come closer to d file and eventually it would end in a draw. So another possible drawish move would be in rook h1. If black plays c4, now white could transpose into the drawish pawn endgame. King e2, king c5, and rook d1. And either black exchanges rooks and it's a drawish pawn endgame, either black has to give up the d file and then the white king would come closer and that would be in a draw. Let's take a look. If rook d1, then king d1. And king c1, white keeps the position and it's a draw. If black plays king d3, then king d1. If black plays king b3, then king b1. And it's a draw. Alright, so rook d1. If black plays some random move, then king d2 is possible. If rook h2 check, we play king c3, check, king c2, and so on. And this is an easy draw. But in the game, white made a mistake. The white king left e3, e4 squares, and now it became all lost for white. So it's a very important example to see how not to play in this position. So in order to make a draw, the defending side needs to meet two requirements. To have the rook as far away as possible from the black's king and pawn. So on c1, in this position white does meet this requirement. And the second requirement that white does not meet in this position is to keep the king on e4 and e3 squares. So now it's lost. And black wins by playing king b5, threatening c4, as usual. Okay, white keeps on checking, king a4, rook c1, king b4, check, king a3, rook c1. Almost the same that we had already seen, but now black can play rook d5, and white does not have move king e4, because it's too far away. So, well, let's say with the king on e3, we could have played king e4 here, and that would be a draw, because we would have attacked the black rook. Now... In this position we can't do this, so black threatens to play king b2 with the idea to kick our rook from the ideal square on c1 and push the pawn c5, c4. And that position is lost already. So king is 3 king b2, rook c4, king b3, and in this position white resigned. So this was a perfect example to see how not to play in this position for a defending side. Let's see what could have happened if white would have left the e4, e3 squares but in that direction. Then black could have a cut off the white king along the fourth rank, not letting the king to come back. And uh, for example, then rook c2, rook h4, rook c1, c4, followed by king c5, and so forth. The white king is cut off. So summarizing our lesson, please remember that if you're on the defending side in this position, keep your rook as far away as possible from the opponent's king. So use a frontal attack again the pass pawn and keep your king on e3, e4 in this position. Do not cross the equator of the chessboard because then it would be cut off. So with the king on e5, black would have had uh, rook d4 and rook h4. And if king e2 has happened in the game, then simply this, this, and this, and rook d5, and white would not have king e4 anymore.
that was the lesson on the Sharon position number one. That was Alexey Patov, and thank you for watching.